found him. I found him. I found him. Wait, bro, you found him? Dude, yeah, where you been? Oh. Guys, this is how you galaxies edge. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is now open on both coasts. That means you can visit Batu in Anaheim, California at the Disneyland Park or at the Hollywood Studios Park in Orlando, Florida. Now, as with any Disney trip, there's going to be a lot of planning involved. So I decided to throw together 20 tips for your Galaxy's Edge trip. Number 20, get there early, but also plan to stay late. So let me explain this. Galaxy's Edge is going to be very, very busy. Uh, there are a lot of lines that fill up fast. If you need something for a standby, it's best to be there early to get that reservation set up. Uh, also, merchandise goes quick, so you want to be there early. But you also want to make sure that you plan to see Galaxy's Edge at night because the fireworks over the spires, or as I call them, spireworks, are just an amazing sight to behold. Number 19, set a budget. Know what you're willing to spend. Galaxy's Edge is a very expensive, even by Disney standards, is a very expensive place to do shopping, and it's about 80% shopping. So do a little research ahead of time, learn what the different prices of the items are, and just set yourself a nice budget so that you know you can kind of keep things in control a little bit better. Number 18, part of that research is to make a list of must-have items. And then add them to your budget. And that includes foods and snacks. You may not be able to try everything during your trip, so make sure you've set aside those must-have foods, even from Docking Bay 7, or must-have snacks like blue milk or green milk, or do you want to try both? But make sure you've added that to your budget. Number 17. Read the books and the comics before you go. Now, there's a five-issue comic series that just wrapped up, and there may be more on the way, we don't know, but it gives you a lot of history and it teaches you about Doc Ondar. So if you plan on spending some time in Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities, you definitely want to read the comics. If you want to know more about the uh, Resistance recruiter Vi Marathi, you want to read the new book Black Spire. And also there's another book called Crash of Fate, which takes place on Batu and just deals with some of the characters around there. And it just kind of helps you understand more about the story behind Black Spire Outpost. Number 16, make reservations. Oga's Cantina, you almost definitely need a reservation for uh, both coasts. That would be Disneyland Park and at Hollywood Studios Park uh, because it, it gets very busy. They do offer some standby, but you're better off getting a reservation. There will be links down below where you can set up your reservation to Oga's Cantina and also Savi's Workshop. That is another experience that tends to fill up quick and has very little standby. Uh, they do have an option to make a reservation for your droids at the Droid Depot as well, but at Disneyland currently it's not as necessary. Uh, it definitely was during the first opening few weeks, but once things calm down and leveled out, it's not really necessary to do at Disneyland Park. All right, we've got 15 more to go, but first, a quick word from Sad and Brad. Hey, Brad. The other day I asked Anna how many droids you got at the Droid Depot. Oh, yeah, Brad. What did he say? He said that too. <laughs> and what am I? Chop liver. Mm. Welcome back, and now it's time for number 15, the Batu Inspira gift card. Now, this little metal gift card originally was only available at the Droid Depot, but as of late, it seems like it's been available at a lot more shops. So be sure to ask around, because you never know where you're going to find it. Now, what it is, is it's actually just a Disney gift card. If you check out, look, look at the back of the package there. So the Batu Inspira is an ancient currency of Black Spire Outpost. You can use this anywhere in Galaxy's Edge but also anywhere at Disney parks and at Disney stores. So it just makes a really cool collectible. Now the way to obtain it is to load it with a minimum of $100. And again, you can reload this as much as you want and it'll be accepted at all Disney parks on both coasts, I think even internationally and Disney stores. Number 14, you can bring outside food into Oga's Cantina. Now Oga's Cantina being that it's a bar, doesn't have a whole lot of food options. In fact, it's just a couple of different snacks that you can get. But you can bring in outside food that's snacks or full-on meals from Docking Bay 7 Food and Cargo. Uh, that's what we did on one of our trips, and we had no issue bringing in all of our stuff. We just asked for it to go when we ordered. Number 
13 mobile order your food. Both Disney World and Disneyland have options that let you mobile order from your cell phone through an app. You can order your food through there, pay via credit card, and it just makes getting your food so much more efficient, so much easier, and is a great way to just take one more stress out of your day. Number 12, try to get seated near DJ Rex. So inside Oga's Cantina, it's kind of a horseshoe shape. So there's one side that really gets a lot of attention from DJ Rex, and then another side that not so much. So if you really want to be a part of the environment, try your best to either get a standing area or a seated area over by the man himself, DJ Rex. Number 11, adopt a pet at the creature stall. Whether it's a wampa, a puffer pig, a tauntaun, a minoc for your car, porgs, you name it. Or, or of course, the kawaki and monkey lizard. There are so many cool pets that you can wear around. And you can either carry them with you, you can hear the noises. But especially the kawaki and monkey lizard, you can wear it and just kind of have it around the land. Not only is it cool for you, but it adds to the atmosphere for everyone else. Well, we're halfway there. We're down to the top ten. But first, Sad and Brad, you guys got anything to say? Well, you guys should totally join the Rad Baby Squad, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's the Sad Baby Squad, you know it? You join it by hitting subscribe and don't miss out on notifications. You gotta click the little bell. Number 10. If you plan on building a droid, grab your accessories and personality chips first and then pay for them when you pay for the droid. So you can shop around the droid depot, walk around a little bit with all your stuff, and bring it with you in line before you purchase your droid. That way, once you build, you can start adding the panels you want, you can start adding the chip you want, and he'll be ready to go during activation. Number nine, at Savi's Workshop, you can actually see the pieces and touch them before you decide on your theme. There are four different lightsaber themes, and generally they'll show you a cardboard like cutout thing a card that doesn't have the best images uh, but you can ask they have drawers off to the side and you can feel and physically pick up the pieces before you make your decision number eight at Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities they sell kyber crystals now these kyber crystals work in Savi's custom lightsabers they also work inside of holocrons they sell both Sith and Jedi holocrons and as far as the kyber crystals go you should just be prepared for low stock or possibly disappointment. Uh, I'd hate to say that, but I just want to make sure that you don't have your sights set too high because stock on these has been intermittent and they seem to be changing the rules as to how many you can buy. For a while there, it did require you to buy a holocron in order to even purchase an extra crystal, uh, but for others, it was just limited to, okay, you're allowed to buy one crystal of any color and that's it, or some rules have been you're allowed to buy one of each color. So it changes all the time, so just be prepared to go with the flow and don't set yourself up for any expectations, just so you don't have any disappointment. Number seven, now this is a pro, pro tip. If you've bought all kinds of stuff, which you're likely to do at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, make sure you stop by First Order Cargo. They will send your purchases up to the front of the park so you don't have to carry them around all day. This is a great service that I wish I had used myself on my first few trips to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Number six, the Disney Play app. So for iPad, iPhone, and Android, there is a Disney Play app or Play Disney app where you can get a data pad to be used in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Now, it's not just that. It also works at all the other Disney parks in Disney World and Disneyland. And you can unlock games and stuff to do while you're waiting in long lines. But the data pad app is something that you should definitely do. It helps build your experience in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. You can choose to do missions for the First Order, choose to do missions for the Resistance, or even just become a smuggler. Or you know what? You can even do all three. Number five, speaking of the Play Disney app, there is a specific job that you can do outside of the data pad, uh, just in the main map. It's called Flight Cruise Wanted. Now, it actually does link into the data pad, but this is only available if you've chosen it from the main map and if you're in the queue for Smuggler's Run. Now, this particular game is actually a series of mini games, depending on where you are in the queue, and it's just a neat way to kill time while waiting in that line. Number four, 
PhotoPass image scanners now on Batu. They're not pictures, they are image scans. And there are a lot of cast members or Batuan citizens who are armed with cameras, image scanners, who will take your picture. And you can also link those to your park ticket if you've purchased a image package. Or if you have an annual pass that includes it, you can just load them right up from your app. They'll just scan the back of your card. And there are also some special hologram shots and limited shots in each land. Disneyland has their unique ones, and it seems that Florida seems to have their own as well. Number three, be patient and kind with cast members. Because rules change so often, it's really easy for them to get their policies mixed up or not be consistent in the rules that you may expect. They are definitely doing the best that they can. And, you know, it's a very stressful time for everybody. And we know you're spending a lot of money. $200 for a lightsaber, $100 for a droid, probably another 70 or 80 on a meal for your family. But you know what? Being kind is free. And don't forget that. Number two, make sure you take care of yourself. Take a break midday. I did mention get there early and stay late. But that should mean maybe taking a little nap midday or go hit the pool. Uh, another big tip is to wear comfy shoes. There's lots of different ways to make sure that you're feeling good and comfy and ready to take in a really fun and unique experience. And tip number one is have fun. Dive in. Go crazy. Become an actual Star Wars character because you only get to do this once. This is a... We've been waiting years to do this. So do everything you can to make sure you take it all in. That you enjoy it. That you're there, you're having the best time of your life because you finally get to be part of Star Wars. And when you see the Falcon for the first time, do your best to not let your family see you cry because it is an amazing thing and you only get to do it once. So, guys, I hope you have the best trips. I hope I just, if you had a good trip, if any of these tips helped you, please do me a favor share this video with your friends, with your family. If you know somebody going to Galaxy's Edge soon, Send them these tips. That way they've got a kind of a heads up and they know what they're getting into a little bit. Leave a thumbs up. Subscribe if you like seeing this kind of content. And I think we're good for now, right? Yeah, no, it sounds like we're good. All right, until next time, may the Force have with you. And goodbye forever. Thank you guys so much for watching the Dano channel. If you like this kind of content, make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss an upload. And for now, just check out one of these videos linked below. YouTube thinks you like one of them. And the other one I handpicked myself. See you later.